Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here, and in this video I wanted to just show a demonstration of how you can party with a plane and make it turn into flames. So over the course of this quick video, I'll just be going through the node graph. This was kindly provided to me by Aristraws 3D on Twitter, who actually turned me on to this whole stylized uh, procedural uh, workflow in Blender, and now I'm uh, doing a video on it with her permission to discuss her node graph. And with that, let's go ahead and begin. All right, so getting started, we're gonna go ahead and select the cube, press X to delete it, and then Shift A, add a plane, well RX90, and then Control A, and we're gonna apply rotation and scale on this. And from here, grab the corner of the window, split it, and we're gonna turn this into a shader editor. And before anything, I'm just gonna remove my world and make a new one. So it's just a fresh world. We're gonna jump this over to rendered mode. From here, we'll go to object, add a new material. On this material, I do wanna make sure blend mode is additive. And then I pretty much won't be needing that anymore. We'll go ahead and just start adding our nodes here. So the first thing I'm going to need is a uh, texture coordinate and then a mapping node. And we're going to connect UV to mapping. And then from here, add a texture gradient. And the values that we're going to plug in for location is going to be negative 1.5, negative 0.1, and then negative 0.5. For the rotation, we're going to plug in 5.1, negative 0.3, 0. For the scale, 2.7, 1.5, negative 0.8. And if we um, have um, Node Wrangler enabled, whenever we control shift click, we could see that we need to change this to spherical. And this is what we have so far. And we're just gonna shift A, add a color node, and just put a mix. And that'll be our first input. And we'll just leave this where it is for now. So the next thing is we'll go under texture, add a Veroni texture. And if we take a look at this, this is what we have. We'll go ahead and just change this to uh, 7.5. And then from here, you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot. So vector, vector curves. We're gonna plug this into the factor, but we're gonna plug in the texture coordinates of generated into the um, vector here. And then we're gonna shift A at another vector mapping. And we'll just put that here. And then shift A, go under texture. I'm gonna add a noise texture in order to be the texture coordinates for this. And we'll just change that over to factor real quick. And if we take a look at what we have here, we're just gonna change these values to nothing because they're already where we need them. And so if we go here and we start playing with the curve, we can start messing with this like a um, warp directional and substance designer, which is, kind of what came to mind when I first saw this. It's like, wow, this is a crazy technique. I spent a long time experimenting with it personally after uh, I first caught wind of it from Eris on Twitter. Uh, she was so kind as to uh, send me the blend files and everything uh, and explain the whole process to me. So I've been sitting on it for a moment waiting for um, her blessing. So we'll change the mix here to uh, 38382 and then control shift click and this is what we have so far. And now let's add a converter color ramp. And we'll change this to be constant. Let's just push this in. And we get something like that. And we'll shift A or a shift D duplicate. And we'll plug this up as well. And for this one, we actually want to put a bit of color in it. So for the first color, which is going to be this one, we're gonna give it the RGB value of 1.9.352. And then we'll click the plus to add another little tick here. And we'll give this one a value of 
0.398.093. And then we'll add another tick. And for this one, we'll give it the value of 1.056. Zero. And if we connect our viewer up to this, this is what we have so far, which is basically a stylized fire, which was the goal. This is the second take of this video, so I hope that the result on this one is more satisfactory. So we'll just delete our viewer for a moment, and we're just going to add a emissive shader, which receives the color. And we're going to add a transparent shader which receives nothing, but we're gonna put a mix shader here, which receives this as the factor. Connect this here, connect the emission to input two. If we control shift click, now we have our shader. And if we bring back out the properties panel, we could even go and enable bloom. Let's put this at something like three, maybe not three ever. Maybe it, wow, two is intense too. Bring the radius in a little bit. But now we have something where if we play with our mapping here, we can create the effect of fire flowing up and down. However, these values on the mapping are still neutral. So we probably do want to tweak them a little bit. For example, uh, changing this to 2.9 is actually what we were supposed to do. 1.9 for the third one and then for this one this is the value that we scroll in order to get the fire effect however at this point i do want to add a driver of my favorite which is pound f-r-a-m-e times zero point or uh, actually negative point zero five and that should be the perfect speed. So if I let this play, now we have fire that will just go on forever with a nice little glow. So I wanted to do this for a while as a uh, like an introduction for 2.8. I know I do a lot of hard ops box cutter content, but I also want to focus on just uh, Blender content and things talking about modeling theory in general, because these are things that are part of the fundamentals required in order to um, truly receive the benefit of um, you know, a tool assisted workflow, but something nice and warm about sitting here looking at a fire, you know, we can make our background a little bit darker, maybe not completely dark, but playing with these values should allow you to get some rather interesting results. The Z is the only one that I found just isn't very fun to play with, but maybe it's just me. But I hope that users are able to use this to find interesting results and also uh, do give Eris a follow on Twitter. I'll have a link to her Twitter in the description so you guys can check her out. She's always doing awesome procedural stuff related to game design and development. So it's always worth a follow to keep up with um, interesting things that other people are doing. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.